Hello, I'm Ken Johnson, and welcome to the New Hope Reads Ministry. We hope you will visit daily as we read from the Chronological Bible. May our time spent together in God's Word be a blessing to us all as God reveals Himself and His nature, as He opens our minds, and as He prepares our hearts for our good and His service. Again, thank you for joining us. Day 161, 1 Kings 15, verses 16 through 22. There was a constant war between King Asa of Judah and King Basha of Israel. King Basha of Israel invaded Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from entering or leaving King Asa's territory in Judah. Asa responded by removing all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the temple of the Lord and the royal palace. He sent it with some of his officials to Ben-Hadad, son of Tabramon, son of Hezion, the king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus along with this message. Let there be a treaty between you and me like the one between your father and my father. See, I am sending you a gift of silver and gold. Break your treaty with King Basha of Israel so that he will leave me alone. Ben-Hadad agreed to King Asa's request and sent the commanders of his army to attack the towns of Israel. They conquered the towns of Ejon, Dan, Abel, Beth, Makkah, and all Kinnereth, and all the land of Naphtali. As soon as Basha of Israel heard what was happening, he abandoned his project of fortifying Ramah and withdrew to Tirzah. Then King Asa sent an order throughout Judah requiring that everyone, without exception, help to carry away the building stones and timbers that Basha had been using to fortify Ramah. Asa used these materials to fortify the town of Geba in Benjamin and the town of Mizpah. Second Chronicles 16 verses 1 through 10. In the 36th year of King Asa's reign, King Basha of Israel invaded Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from entering or leaving King Asa's territory in Judah. Asa responded by removing the silver and gold from the treasuries of the temple of the Lord and the royal palace. He sent it to King Ben-Hadad of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus, along with this message. Let there be a treaty between you and me, like the one between your father and my father. See, I am sending you silver and gold. Break your treaty with King Basha of Israel so that he will leave me alone. Ben-Hadad agreed to King Asa's request and sent the commanders of his army to attack the towns of Israel. They conquered the towns of Ejon, Dan, Abel, Beth, Makkah, and all the store cities in Naphtali. As soon as Basha of Israel heard what was happening, he abandoned his project of fortifying Ramah and stopped all work on it. Then King Asa called out all the men of Judah to carry away the building stones and timbers that Basha had been using to fortify Ramah. Asa used these materials to fortify the towns of Geba and Mizpah. At that time, Hanani the seer came to King Asa and told him, Because you have put your trust in the king of Aram instead of in the Lord your God, you missed your chance to destroy the army of the king of Aram. Don't you remember what happened to the Ethiopians and Libyans and their vast army with all of their chariots and charioteers? At that time you relied on the Lord, and he handed them over to you. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. What a fool you have been! From now on you will be at war. Asa became so angry with Hanani for saying this that he threw him into prison and put him in stocks. At that time, Asa also began to oppress some of his people. 1 Kings 16, verses 1 through 7. This message from the Lord was delivered to King Basha by the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani. I lifted you out of the dust to make you ruler of my people Israel, but you have followed the evil example of Jeroboam. You have provoked my anger by causing my people Israel to sin. So now I will destroy you and your family, just as I destroyed the descendants of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. The members of Basha's family who die in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who die in the field will be eaten by vultures. 
The rest of the events of, in Baasha's reign and the extent of his power are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Baasha died, he was buried in Tirzah. Then his son Elah became the next king. The message from the Lord against Baasha and his family came through the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani. It was delivered because Baasha had done what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as the family of Jeroboam had done, and also because Baasha had destroyed the family of Jeroboam. The Lord's anger was provoked by Baasha's sins. 1 Kings 16, verses 8 through 14. Elah, son of Baasha, began to rule over Israel in the 26th year of the king Asa's reign of Judah. He reigned in the city of Tirzah for two years. Then Zimri, who commanded half of the royal chariots, made plans to kill him. One day in Tirzah, Elah was getting drunk at the home of Arza, the supervisor of the palace. Zimri walked in and struck him down and killed him. This happened in the 27th year of King Asa's reign in Judah. Then Zimri became the next king. Zimri immediately killed the entire royal family of Basha, leaving him not one single male child. He even destroyed distant relatives and friends. So Zimri destroyed the dynasty of Basha as the Lord had promised through the prophet Jehu. This happened because of all the sins of Basha and his son Elah had committed, and because of the sins they led Israel to commit. They provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, with their worthless idols. The rest of the events in Elah's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. 1 Kings 16, verses 15 through 20. Zimri began to rule over Israel in the 27th year of King Asa's reign in Judah, but his reign in Tirzah lasted only seven days. The army of Israel was then attacking the Philistine town of Gibbethon. When they heard that Zimri had committed treason and had assassinated the king, that very day they chose Omri, commander of the army, as new king of Israel. So Omri led the entire army of Israel up from Gibbethon to attack Tirzah, Israel's capital. When Zimri saw that the city had been taken, he went into the citadel of the palace and burned it down over himself and died in the flames. For he too had done what was evil in the Lord's sight. He followed the example of Jeroboam in all the sins he had committed and led Israel to commit. The rest of the events in Zimri's reign and his conspiracy are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. 1 Kings 16, verses 21 through 28. But now the people in Israel were split into two factions. Half the people tried to make Tibni, son of Ganath, their king, while the other half supported Omri. But Omri's supporters defeated the supporters of Tibni. So Tibni was killed, and Omri became the next king. Omri began to rule over Israel in the 31st year of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned 12 years in all, six of them in Tirzah. Then Omri bought the hill, now known as Samaria, from its owner, Shimmer, for 150 pounds of silver. He built a city on it and called the city Samaria in honor of Shimmer. But Omri did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. He followed the example of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, in all the sins he had committed and led Israel to commit. The people provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, with their worthless idols. The rest of the events of Omri's reign, the extent of his power, and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Omri died, he was buried in Samaria. Then his son Ahab became the next king. 1 Kings 16, 29-34 Ahab, son of Omri, began to rule over Israel in the 38th year of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 22 years. But Ahab, son of Omri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. And as though it were not enough to follow the sinful example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbal of the Sidonians, and he began to bow down in worship of Baal. First Ahab built a temple and an altar for Baal in Samaria. Then he set up an Asherah pole. He did more to provoke the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than any of the other kings of Israel before him. It was during his reign that Heel, a man from Bethel, rebuilt Jericho. When he laid its foundations, it cost him the life of his oldest son, Abiram. And when he completed it and had set up its gates, it cost him the life of his youngest son, Segeb. 
This all happened according to the message from the Lord concerning Jericho spoken by Joshua, son of Nun. 1 Kings fifteen twenty three and 24 The rest of the events in Asa's reign, the extent of his power, everything he did, and the names of the cities he built, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. In his old age, his feet became diseased. When Asa died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then Jehoshaphat, Asa's son, became the next king. Second Chronicles 16, through 14 The rest of the events of Asa's reign from beginning to end are recorded in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. In the 39th year of his reign, Asa developed a serious foot disease. Yet even with the severity of his disease, he did not seek the Lord's help, but turned only to his physicians. So he died in the 41st year of his reign. He was buried in the tomb he had carved out for himself in the city of David. He was laid on a bed perfumed with sweet spices and fragrant ointments, and the people built a huge funeral fire in his honor. 2 Chronicles 17, 1-19 Then Jehoshaphat, Asa's son, became the next king. He strengthened Judah to stand against any attack from Israel. He stationed troops in all the fortified towns of Judah, and he assigned additional garrisons to the land of Judah and to the towns of Ephraim that his father Asa had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the example of his father's early years and did not worship the images of Baal. He sought his father's God and obeyed his commands instead of following the evil practices of the kingdom of Israel. So the Lord established Jehoshaphat's control over the kingdom of Judah. Now all the people of Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat so that he became very wealthy and highly esteemed. He was deeply committed to the ways of the Lord. He removed the pagan shrines and asherah poles from Judah. In the third year of his reign, Jehoshaphat sent his officials to teach in all the towns of Judah. These officials included Ben-Hale, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Micaiah. He sent Levites along with them, including Shemaiah, Nethaniah, Zebediah, As- Asahel, Shemaroth, John- Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, and Tob Adonijah. He also sent out priests Elishama and Jehoram. They took copies of the book of the law of the Lord and traveled around through all the towns of Judah teaching the people. Then the fear of the Lord fell over all the surrounding kingdoms so that none of them wanted to to declare war on Jehoshaphat. Some of the Philistines brought him gifts and silver as tribute, and the Arabs brought 7,700 rams and 7,700 male goats. So Jehoshaphat became more and more powerful and built fortresses and storage cities throughout Judah. He stored numerous supplies in Judah's towns and stationed an army of seasoned troops at Jerusalem. His army was enrolled according to ancestral clans. From Judah, there were 300,000 troops organized in units of 1,000 under the command of Adna. Next in command was Jehohanan, who commanded 280,000 troops. Next was Amasiah, son of Zikri, who volunteered for the Lord's service with 200,000 troops under his command. From Benjamin, there were 200,000 troops equipped with bows and shields. They were under the command of Eliada, a veteran soldier. Next in command was Jehozabad, who commanded 180,000 armed men. These were the troops stationed in Jerusalem to serve the king, besides those Jehoshaphat stationed in the fortified towns throughout Judah. 1 Kings 17, 1-7 Now Elijah, who was from Tishbe in Gilead, told King Ahab, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go to the east and hide by Kareth Brook, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kareth Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while the brook dried up, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. Hi there, and welcome to New Hope Reads. I'm Mark Roof, and we are delighted that you've joined us to share in the reading of God's Word. 
very important that we share this together and be in God's Word daily. And by the way, we'd like to invite you to join us here at New Hope Church of Christ anytime you get a chance. Sunday mornings, we have classes at 930. We have worship at 1030, and you can join us live or online. Have a blessed day.